Good morning, one and all. So this is the thirtieth lecture in uh, module five. What we have seen last day is uh, the topic like uh, series hybrid electric drive train. So series hybrid and parallel hybrid. These are the two electric drive train uh, which are there in module number five. So the first part is uh, series hybrid electric drive train. In that case, we had started with operation patterns and control strategies. Today we are going to see some very important topic which is called as a PPS control. We had started this last day, but what is the uh, PPS control uh, graph? So there are mainly four modes A, B, C, D. We are going to see all these four modes in PPS control, and there is another type of control. Which is available in case of a series hybrid electric drive train that is called as thermostat control. So where PPS control is used, where thermostat control is used, all those things we will see today, and uh, then we will start the major or main part of this uh, series hybrid electric drive train that is the last topic, which is called as designing or sizing of major components. So mainly the last three topics that is sizing or designing of traction motor. Sizing or designing of engines and sizing and designing of peaking power source that is PPS. These three are there in your syllabus. But the first topic that is how to size or how to design the electrical coupling that also I think should have been in your syllabus. So we will do this and this will be asked in the exam as well. Though this is little uh, not mentioned directly in the syllabus, but electrical coupling design also I think will be very important. For the designing of series hybrid electric drive train. So today we are going to see PPS control. Very important question for 10 marks. Uh, with the with the respect of graph, you have to explain what is the A B C D control strategy for PPS. PPS is peaking power source. So we are finding in case of hybrid that there are two types of sources. One is the the fuel is coming to the engine. Then from engine it is going to the generator. That is the main power source. And there is an auxiliary power source, or which is called as a peaking power source or bumper power source, which is nothing but the battery in this case. So, how to design the uh, PPS for different modes of operation, or what are the different criteria of PPS operation that we will see today in the first topic. Then, not every time PPS is used. Sometimes uh, there is some on-off, on-off kind of uh, strategy is there where very frequent turning on and turning off of the uh, vehicle are happening, so that is actually called as thermostat control. We will see that, and only one topic from the design we will see today. Remaining three topics we will try to cover on coming Friday. That is uh, the design of traction motor, design of engine, design of peaking power. All those things we will see on coming Friday. And on Friday, uh, with the third lecture in this module five, we are going to complete the first part of module five, and the next part will be hybrid. Parallel electric drive train design that will take another uh, three to four lectures. So I guess in another four lectures, our syllabus for this uh, EHV subject will be over. So we are starting today series hybrid electric drive train design with PPS control. Now, what are the different control strategies? So this slide was done last day. So control strategy is a control rule that is preset in the vehicle controller and governs the operation of each component. So what are the main components? There is mainly source, then there is converters, then there is uh, motor control, and there is the motor drivetrain. And there are different uh, modes of operation. In one mode, we find the first source is giving all the power to the drivetrain. Secondly, we find maybe the second source is giving the power to the drivetrain. Sometimes we are finding that uh, both the sources are not doing anything, but the drivetrain is giving some power back to the uh, PPS source. All these things uh, we have found. So there are different strategies that we uh, apply uh, in case of uh, this series hybrid kind of electric vehicle driving. So obviously the performance of the drivetrain relies mainly on control quality in which control strategy plays a different role. In practice, there are several control strategies that can be employed in a drivetrain for vehicles with different mission requirements. So not every time we require maximum power, not every time uh, the vehicle can be run with the PPS. So sometimes it is PPS and main power which is driving driving the vehicle. Sometimes only the PPS is driving the vehicle. Sometimes the engine is driving the vehicle as well as charging the PPS at the same time. So we have seen some eight to nine different uh, operating modes. So some modes will be discussed here under PPS. So there are mainly two cases. Uh, one is or two operating modes, control strategies. One is maximum SOC of PPS, that is 
uh, the first strategy this is a 10 mark question second will be a five mark question that is engine turn on and turn off or engine on off for thermostat controls so first type that is soc that is state of charge we have to maintain the battery uh, for all operations so there are four modes in soc of pps what are the four modes we will see in the coming diagram you can see here uh, this is a diagram that you have to draw in the exam and you have to uh, explain all the four modes in this diagram though the modes are not explained in the book very clearly in the diagram but i have done that so there is a flow chart after this we will see what is that so there is a correction in that that i would like to explain this three so there are mainly uh, three four powers i will tell you what is pcom pcom is the commanded power okay so pcom is the commanded power which is commanded by the vehicle driver how much power he is ex expecting to extract from the overall system so here is a uh, fuel coming in fuel coming to the engine and that engine is actually giving the power to the drivetrain maybe directly there is another case in which uh, there is another case in which the pps is actually giving the power to the uh, vehicle as well as through a intermediate electric motor so they their power from the engine and power from the pps they might be coupled and they might be given to the drivetrain all these things are there so what is pcom pcom is a commanded power that means how much power the uh, driver is expecting to get from the overall system so this is pcom second is this is ppps so here in the book you will find that uh, there is a mistake here so first they have written pcom second also they have written as pcom so while you are doing drawing this diagram uh, don't follow the book follow my diagram only everything else is same but this second line should be ppps so there is a printing mistake in the book please be careful so ppps is power of the breaking power source okay so ppps is power of the picking power source not breaking power source i'm sorry this is the power of the picking power source so first is commanded power how much power the uh, external driver is expecting from the engine second is uh, peg peg is the power of the engine generator so primary source how much it is generating engine and generator and this is a ppps so generally we find that pcom is equal to ppps plus peg so what is the first strategy so there are four strategies this is the first strategy a this is the second strategy which is called as b this is the third strategy which is called as c and this is the fourth strategy this is called as d so this is the line vehicle speed whenever the vehicle is uh, in traction mode traction mode, mode means uh, the pps and peg that means p engine generator and p peak power source they together are driving the vehicle that is called as the traction mode so in traction mode main power is generated by the engine or generator and the pps and together they are driving the vehicle forward that is the first case and here in this case vehicle is in the forward direction so from the vehicle speed towards above it is traction and from vehicle speed towards below actually i am reducing the vehicle speed this is called as a braking so below part is the braking part above part is the traction part traction part means with respect to time with respect to increment in the torque i am increasing the speed second case in this case actually i am reducing uh, the speed so this is the first part above the vehicle speed i'm increasing the vehicle speed and this is the below part i'm trying to reduce the vehicle speed that means i'm actually braking so this is the braking region and above one is the traction region in traction region there are coming two cases one is a and b so a is hybrid traction mode b is engine generator alone traction or pps charging mode c is the hybrid braking mode and d is the regenerative braking mode so all these four cases you have to explain let us start with uh the part a and this is the stars i have put that means this is a very important question so all this diagram you have to draw it is not difficult don't get confused only thing is you have to understand what is what so the object of this control strategy so this is maximum soc for pps control strategy that means state of charge in the battery should be always maintained as much as possible so the object of this control strategy is to meet the power demand of the driver and to maintain the soc of the pps at high level so whenever there is a battery we always are supposed to keep it fully charged i told you i gave you the example that one lakh is your salary so that is nothing but peg okay that is nothing but the constant power which is generated by the uh, uh, generator and engine set uh, second case there should be a bumper amount that that means there should be a 50000 uh, amount you have kept separate for any kind of specific requirement and that 50000 you can use when there is a specific requirement suppose you have taken 20000 from there and whenever possible you have to repay that 20000 to make that 
bumper uh, fund uh, always saturated so always that should be 50 kilohertz so 1 lakh is your salary that is for your uh, needs so that is peg and 50000 is your bumper amount but that bumper amount should be always 50000 it should not happen that you have used it uh, 20000 you have used it one month and your bumper fund is reduced to 30000 if it has reduced in the next month you have to try to fulfill it up to 50000 so what is the commanded power commanded power can be anything it can be uh, uh, greater than uh, peg if the commanded power is greater than PEG, that means that extra power has to be taken from PPPS. Okay, uh, I'm telling you, commanded power means suppose in some month uh, it is found that your extra uh, extra uh, expense is twenty thousand. So regular expense is one lakh that you do by your salary, and extra expenses are uh, twenty thousand. So your total commanded expenses PCOM is one lakh twenty thousand. So one lakh will come from your salary, that is uh, the base power, and that twenty thousand will come from the PPS power that is the bumper amount. So your bumper SOC has reduced. So state of charge, your bumper uh, account has reduced. Next month, what you have to do is maybe in the next month. So whatever is the next power cycle here, because vehicle always does not go on hill. Okay, so whenever the vehicle is going on hill, at that time maybe commanded power will be greater than PEG. At that time, you have to take the help of PPPS. So you have wasted some of the charge from PPPS. You have utilized some charge from the PPPS. Now whenever the vehicle is running through the flat road at the time your p commanded will be less than peg that means some month will come when your total expense become eighty thousand. so there is no special expense or nothing so in that case whatever twenty thousand is remaining in that month you repay it to the uh, your bumper fund sometimes whatever we are finding is p com is less than peg so whatever engine generator power it is uh, uh, produced that is actually greater than commanded power in which case in which case the vehicle is going on the same uh, flat floor or flat path in that case pcom is less than peg in that case what the engine generator set does is it gives some power to the commanded power and with the remaining power it tries to charge the pps so this is you have to understand and this is actually case a now let us see what is the case a what is the case a the objective of this control that means all this abcd control is to meet the power demand of the driver so to maintain the soc of the pps at a high level in this case the generator and engine set is primary power source and the pps is the secondary power source i told you this control strategy is the proper uh, design for vehicles in which performance what are the three performance criteria first one is speed second one is gradability third one is acceleration so all these three characteristics we have to maintain that is the first concern speed has to be high required acceleration has to be uh, whatever is required and gradability that means we should be able to go above the high peak hill okay all the three, three things the car should be able to do so speed gradability acceleration all these things criteria should be met this is the first concern such as the vehicles with frequent stop stop go that means whenever the vehicle is passing through the city start stop start stop this kind of thing we have to do that also is too much cumbersome or that is actually creating a pressure on the vehicle so we should be able to do that stop go stop go kind of uh, driving to the city as well so speed gradability acceleration stop go driving pattern military vehicle in which carrying out the mission is the most important objective so any difficult or any easy situation everything should be properly tackled by the vehicle and this max soc pps control strategy is that uh, even if in the very difficult situation the pps should be able to supply enough amount of soc or charge to the electric vehicle a high soc level in the pps generally uh, battery pack is the pps so high soc level in the pps guarantees high performance of vehicle at any time okay that means whatever is the bumper source whatever is the auxiliary source that should be always fully charged and we have to ensure that how we are doing it so there are mainly four strategies the so max soc pps so here also you see it is pcom it is pps so in the book it is given wrong in the book it is given as pcom okay so the second thing should be ppps and third thing should be pe by g so generally uh, in general case whenever there is too much of power demand we have seen in the last day that pcom commanded power is equal to pps power plus eg power eg power is the absolute uh, power which is a uh, kind of average power that is coming every time and if there is some bumper extra power is required that should be supplied by pps so what is the strategy a in this case so max 
SOC PPS control strategy is depicted in figure below. This is the figure. Here the points ABCD represents the power demand from driver commands either in traction or in braking mode. So C and D is in braking mode. Why, do, why is it braking mode? Because vehicle speed, in this case, you are below to the vehicle speed. That means vehicle speed is reduced. That's why C and D in these both cases, the braking is occurring. And A and B in both these cases, uh, traction is occurring. Traction means uh, we are increasing torque uh, and uh, we are trying to drive the vehicle faster towards forward direction. Let's see first what is case A. So case A is here. Okay, so case A is here. In this case, what we are finding is this is the commanded power. So now I'm explaining this figure. Please understand. Okay, so now this is the commanded power, PCOM. And what is this? This is the PEG. Okay, so this level is the PEG. So you find here, this is the PEG. So engine generator is generating this much power. But commanded power in this case is very high. Okay, so who is going to supply this extra power? This extra power is going to be supplied by the PPS. This is strategy A. Like uh, your monthly expenses suddenly become 1 lakh 20,000. Like this, this is the P commanded. Uh, your salary is 1 lakh, that is the PEG. And the remaining 20,000 rupees you are going to take from your extra or hidden fund. Okay, so point A represents the demanded traction power that is greater than the power that the engine generator can produce. So this P com is the commanded power from that PEG is something which the engine generator can produce. In this case, the PPS must produce the power to make up for the power shortage of the engine generator. So in this case, this PPS is going to generate the extra power which is required for the engine generator like this. Okay, so this is very easy to understand. And uh, next case, that is case B. Okay, this is the case B. Here's the case B. This is in this case, this is the commanded power you can find out. Okay, this is the commanded power PCOM. Okay, this is a commanded power. So what is a case B? So case A is hybrid traction mode. What is meant by hybrid traction mode? In this case, uh, the PEG, that is the engine generator and PPPS. Together, they are actually driving the vehicle. That's why A is called as hybrid traction mode. B is engine generator alone can uh, do the traction and PPS charging mode. So in this case, you are finding that PCOM. PCOM means commanded power is less than PEG. So this is the PEG power. Engine generator can give maximum this much power. So whatever is the PCOM, that can be supplied by PEG as well. Okay, and this much power is still remaining. This much power is still remaining, uh, which is actually being produced by the uh, PEG. So what will happen? This PEG in that case will charge the PPPS charging. So in this case, there is something new term PPPS char. PPPS char means PPPS charging. So in this case, this much is the commanded power, and and from below. Okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, here uh, the this much is the charging. This much is the commanded power PCOM, and from here to here, this this horizontal line. This is actually the PEG power. So this much power engine generator can produce. Okay, and this commanded power is less than the engine generator power. So what will happen is PEG will supply all the power to the engine generator. That means to the main drive train. And whatever engine generator power is extra, which it is producing, okay, that will be used for charging the EPPs. So same thing, first case, uh, your salary is 1 lakh, but your expenditure has suddenly become 1 lakh uh, 20,000. So this 20,000 extra you are taking from your bumper fund. So bumper fund is nothing but the battery, PPS. And second case, you are finding that your uh, total demand uh, is uh, less than what is your monthly salary. So maybe your total demand is 70,000 rupees. Your salary is 1 lakh. So extra that 30,000 you are using to charge the PPS. So this is the thing. What is this? This is actually the PPS max. This is the maximum uh, SOC for the PPS. It can go to the max traction mode power. So you can, this PPS char can take the maximum PPS power to this level. So beyond this point, you cannot charge PPS. So what can be the maximum power that can be supplied by the hybrid system? It is this much, this much is PEG. Okay, this much is PEG from here to this horizontal line, plus this much maximum PPS. So this is that 50,000, whatever you're talking about. So this is 50,000 and below this is 1 lakh. The maximum you can spend 1 lakh 50,000 per month. So if sudden requirement becomes more than 1 lakh 50,000, no, you cannot sustain that. Okay, so 50,000 you have kept extra, that is this max traction motor power. Okay, so from here, this is the max traction motor power. In that case, this is the PPPS power and this is the PEG power, likewise. So point B, uh, this is the point B, this is the uh, matter B. So in this case, you are finding that the commanded power is less than the power that the EG produces when operating in its optimal operating area. 
That means P E G power is this much from here to this line, and commanded power is less than P E G power. In the, this case, what we find is the mode two operation is used. Mode two operation, uh, SOC level of the P P S. Actually, the SOC level of P P S is increased. So if the SOC of the P P S is less than seventy percent. So here the criteria are given. If the SOC of the PPS is less than seventy percent, then the engine generator is operated with full load. The operating point of the engine generator with full load depends on maximum design capacity of engine generator. So in this case, if you are finding that PPS is charged less than seventy percent, then this extra energy from engine is used to charge the PPS it to the maximum full effect. Okay, so PPS charge if less than seventy percent, then we are not taking any power from PPS. In that case, EG is driving the full load. And the remaining power in EG will be charging the PPS from 70% to the above. So we generally don't allow the PPS to fall below 70%. Okay. So this is the second case. This is B engine generator alone traction or PPS charging mode. So two things are happening with the PEG. One thing is it is driving the vehicle, and second thing is it is actually charging the uh, PPS part. So there is the second part which is called as B. So in this B, what is the condition? Condition is demanded power is less than maximum power produced by engine generator. That is, demanded power is less than maximum power produced by engine generator. So, engine generator is driving the whole demanded power, commanded power, plus whatever is the extra power uh, which is remaining in the PEG that is charging the PPPS. First case, what is the criteria? In this case, the maximum commanded power is greater than PEG power. You can check. This is the command. This is the command power is greater than the PEG power. So that's why in this case PEG plus PPPS is supplying the commanding power. So both these cases are when the uh, power demanded is in traction mode. That means the vehicle is trying to go in the forward direction and traction is occurring. Traction means vehicle is going forward and accelerating and speed is increasing and all these things. So in the other two cases, so in the point B. PEG is greater than PCOM. PCOM is the commanded power we have seen. Hence, maximum part of PEG power goes into traction motor to propel the vehicle, so takes the vehicle forward. In the second case, like this, the remaining part of PEG goes to charge the PPS to increase the PPS energy level more than seventy percent. So this is very important because previously uh, you had used that PPS power in the A case and you you found that your PPS level has reduced below seventy percent. So in the second case, when command power is less, at that time PPS is recharged. So PPS energy more than seventy percent in point B. When the SOC of the PPS reaches to maximum PPS hundred percent, so you are charging the PPS like this, and PPS has reached to hundred percent. So when the PEG is uh, doing two things, that is, it is uh, supplying to the command power as well as it is charging the PPPS. In that case, continuously the vehicle is running. Uh, in this case, when we are finding that. PPS has charged up to maximum 100% or top line. Uh, in that case, PEG is channelized for PCOM or traction only. So in this case, uh, P uh, uh, PEG is not giving any charge to the PPPS. So uh, initial case, uh, PEG is greater than PCOM. So PEG is doing two things: it is charging the PPS as well as it is doing the traction. And now in this case, we are finding that. Uh, the charging is increasing, increasing, increasing. PPPS was less than 70%. Now this PPPS is increasing. In this case, suddenly we are finding that after certain charging, the PPPS has got charged to the maximum peak, or PPPS has gone to the 100% or top line. In this case, automatically what happens is, in this case, the PPPS charging will be stopped. Okay, and PEG will be totally doing the traction work. Now PEG does not charge the PPS anymore. EG and PPPS link now remains idle. So whatever is the link between uh, PEG and PPPS, that link will remain idle. So in this B case is the biggest case. In the first, we have to say that PEG is driving uh, the vehicle as well as PEG is charging the PPPS. That is the first case. In point B only, the second part is we have to say uh, now. The PPPS has become uh, fully saturated. That means SOC in PPPS is 100%. In this case, the charging of uh, PPPS is done not done anymore. In this case, the whole power of PEG, that is engine generator set, it is actually doing the traction work. So it is taking the vehicle for in the forward direction only. This is the second case. So in this case, PEG PPPS link remains idle. Third case. So third case, we are coming below. In this case, we have to do some kind of braking. Okay, so this is the case C. 
in this case actually commanded force in the reverse direction is too much okay and it is actually crossing and falling below so in this case this much commanded break is actually asked in the reverse direction so this kind of break is not uh, possible to be generated only by the pb mech so this is the mechanical breaking so in hybrid system uh, breaking is also hybrid so in this case we are using two kinds of breaking one is mechanical breaking another is regenerative or electrical breaking so this much is the mechanical breaking and this much is the regenerative or electrical breaking so point c commanded breaking power is lot greater than the vehicle mechanical breaking power pb mech okay so this much total breaking power is expected so when you are coming below than this vehicle speed line so this is the vehicle speed line when you are reducing the vehicle speed actually it is called as braking previously you were increasing the vehicle speed that's why it was called as traction now your vehicle speed is reducing whenever you are reducing your vehicle speed at that time there are two kinds of braking one is mechanical braking that is only this much and another is electrical braking that is this much part so whenever the commanded braking power is a lot greater than the vehicle mechanical braking or b mech a hybrid brake electrical plus, plus mechanical is used here the main braking power is generated by electrical motor braking like this so this is electrical motor brake and the remaining brake is given by the uh, pb mech and whatever is the electrical brake that brake whenever it is put it is actually charging the pps because this is regenerative braking so the main braking power is generated by electrical motor braking p regen so in this case you are finding there is something else is there so p regen Okay, regen means regenerative braking power, and PB mech is mechanical braking power like this. So uh, in the P regen, it is actually regenerative braking power, and PB mech it is a mechanical braking power. So motor braking and maximum regenerative braking, the mechanical braking system produces the remaining brake power. So whatever is P regen doing, this part is actually generating the uh, reverse charging or regenerative charging for the PPS as well. So this is actually increasing the SOC. obviously the pps should be less than 100% then only the regenerative braking can charge the pps otherwise whatever regenerative braking energy is being used it is uh, is produced it is being wasted last case last case is d you are finding in this case uh, commanded braking power is less than the maximum regenerative power so from here to here this is the maximum regenerative power which can be produced that means maximum electrical braking can be produced by this in c you found that the maximum braking was greater than uh, regenerative braking that's why regenerative braking and uh, mechanical braking both we had to use so while driving also it is hybrid it is driven by in uh, uh, e and g that is engine and generator and while braking also you are finding it is hybrid there are two kinds of braking one is electrical braking which is called as p regen regenerative braking one is called as pb mech that is a mechanical braking okay so in the case of d what you are finding is uh, the commanded braking that means little bit of braking we required that is actually not as much as uh, the regenerative braking so little bit of regeneration happens here little bit of regeneration and no mechanical brake so the point d represents the case where commanded braking power is less than the maximum braking power that the mechanical that the uh, maximum electrical braking power uh, the that the motor can produce so you can find that this p region is the maximum mechanical braking here p region is little less than the maximum uh, electrical braking so in this case uh, in case of d Uh, this regenerative braking or electric braking only supplies all the braking power so in this case uh, electrical braking is only used mechanical braking is not used so these are the four cases with this uh, diagram you have to explain and those who have joined late uh, you have to see that in the book of ehsani there is a mistake here only in this part so first should be pcom commanded power second should be pps here also in the book of ehsani they have mentioned pcom okay but this should not be pcom this should be ppps in a hybrid traction mode here it is called as power of picking power source it is very easily understandable but they have made some printing mistake you should not make that mistake in the exam so it should be pcom ppps and pe by g so there is a flow chart so whenever you are asked this uh, maximum soc of ppps you should draw this flow chart also i'll try to explain so first the vehicle is starting traction power command okay so traction power command is coming from the driver how much uh, speed he wants how much acceleration he wants and all these things so is it traction or it is braking so first we have to understand whether the vehicle wants to go forward or it wants to brake if yes so braking power also coming here so this is a 
decision making block so traction power and braking power so p brake and p p traction both are coming here whether we want to take the vehicle forward or we want to take the uh, vehicle uh, we want to slow the vehicle or we want to do some braking so traction means going forward no braking so traction is opposite of braking you can understand so is it traction or braking yes it is traction so traction means it will go below if it is braking that means here braking power is more traction power is less in that case it will go in this direction so this is c and d okay c and d means you are actually coming below you are coming below the vehicle speed block so this this is that coming below the vehicle speed block means this so c and d will occur here and a and b will occur here so traction or braking so yes yes means it is traction so in this traction we have to check whether peg is greater than p traction peg is greater than p traction that means whatever uh, traction power required whether it is greater than uh, uh, engine generator power or whether it is less than engine generator power if required traction power is greater than engine uh, generator power in that case uh, we have to give both that means we have to use in that case uh, pps as well as the engine generator power so this is the first case where uh, p engine generator power is uh, actually less uh, than the thing so uh, in this case uh, we have to use the a the hybrid traction engine generator plus pps has to be used so in that case uh, traction power is actually uh, a lot more uh, than the whatever power the eg produces so in that case uh, hybrid traction uh, and uh, engine generator plus pps both the things will come so this is actually uh, the a case if the engine uh, generator power is greater than the traction power yes so traction power engine generator power is greater than the traction power it is no no means what in this case traction power is greater than engine generator or engine generator is less than traction that's what we have coming in the right word so you have to understand this diagram very well so first you are giving traction and here you are giving brake so traction yes that means we are not braking okay so in this case you are coming below in this case is peg greater than traction if it is yes then the uh, peg will do two things that is it will do the traction part as well as it will charge the pps okay uh, so that is here but in this case peg greater than p traction no that means p traction is more than peg that time hybrid traction engine engine plus pps all the things are required here but if peg is greater than p traction then we have to come here so in this case we have to check if soc is less than sop top that means have we already reached 100% of uh, SOC. If it says yes, actually I have given it wrong, so I have to correct it. Okay, so if it is not, uh, if SOC is less than, no, this is correct, I think. If SOC is less than SOP top, okay, yes, SOC is less than SOP top, that means state, state of charge of the PPS is less than 100% of PPS charge. That means what happens is whatever extra power uh, in criteria B engine is producing, that will be utilized to charge the pps charge so this is even here it is pps charging okay so first whether traction or brake it is traction then whether engine power is greater than traction or less than traction so we find engine power is less than traction power that means extra power has to come from pps this is case a second yes that means engine power is greater than traction power that means engine will do two things one it will give the power to the traction and second so this is the case engine is uh, greater than traction and uh, second you are finding is engine is uh, power traction power is less than engine power and soc is also less than the soc top so in this case eg will do two things it will uh, drive the vehicle as well as it will charge the pps so this is case b but if you are finding that soc is equal to soc top okay or soc is uh, fully charged in that case what happens is again engine power is uh, redirected so that it will be doing traction only okay so that's why the this is the uh, when the pp is fully charged then engine is running only the traction case okay and then again go back to here so this is case a and this is case b case b means engine is charging the pps and engine is uh, driving the vehicle alone if pps is fully charged next case when braking so traction or braking so traction no so if traction no then it is going to break if brake is greater than pm max okay so if brake is greater than pm max no okay if great is brake greater than uh, pm max yes so in this case we are going to use hybrid braking so whatever brake power is required that is greater than pm max okay so in that case uh, pm max means uh, mechanical braking as well as electrical braking we require so in this case it is hybrid braking that's why it is called as case c 
So in case C, we found the regenerative braking by electrical. This is giving the main power as well as we are taking some power from the uh, mechanical brake. So that is the case C. So if P brake is greater than PM max, yes, we need hybrid braking. And if no, that means whatever power is required that is not uh, greater than PM max. That means in that case, the uh, mechanical braking is not required. In that case, the regenerative braking only can give all the power required for the uh, for the braking. So maximum power is coming as the input and we are finding whether this PM max is greater than or less than the P brake. So if P brake is greater than PM max, so this is the PM max input coming. PM max is coming from the vehicle. Okay, and the vehicle braking, electrical braking is also given from PPS. So PPS is generating that electrical braking only. So, uh, so uh, if that PM max is greater than or less than P brake, if we are finding that hybrid braking is required, electrical braking is not enough. So in that case, electrical and mechanical together, it is C. And if electrical mechanical is electrical braking is sufficient enough, then it is only regenerative braking, it is KST. So this flow chart with respect to this uh, diagram, whatever we have seen here, all this you have to explain for our 10 mark question. And there's a very important question. This is a, a very important design also for the vehicle. That is, what is the maximum SOC of PPS control strategy? So you have to explain all this A, B, C, D. And uh, maybe in very short, you have to draw that diagram also. That is the whole uh, schematic diagram of uh, a series type of hybrid electrical drivetrain. So that is one diagram. Then this uh, previous uh, diagram, whatever is shown here, A, B, C, D, this diagram, and then this flow chart. So all these things together, you have to draw and you have to explain all this for A, B, C, D strategy. Now, after this, we will go for engine on-off or thermostat uh, control strategy. So thermostat is something like a sensor. It will be uh, doing on-off, on-off kind of thing. So the max SOC of PPS control strategy emphasizes on keeping the SOC of the PPS at a high level. So always we are trying to make the a a SOC as kind of a hundred percent. Okay, that is the thing. So PPS SOC top line, that is a hundred percent. So whenever the PPS is charging, 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 as soon as the PPS charges to the peak, what we do is we switch off the engine operation. Okay, so this is the engine operation. What is the engine operation? That means engine generator EG. So EG is on. Okay, how long? As long as the PP is uh, charging. Okay. So whenever the PP is fully charged, the engine is off. In that case, PP, uh, PPPS is falling and falling to not zero value. This is that 100%. So I have not written here. I will write. So this is 70% and the top one is 100%. So this is a PPPS. Uh, uh, this is 100% and it is falling to 70%. So as long as uh, the charging is occurring, so charging of the uh, PPPS battery is being done by the engine generator system only. So this is actually the strategy B we are talking about. So in this strategy B, uh, the engine generator is actually charging the PPS and whenever it is going for 100%, as soon as PPPS go for 100%, engine generator switches it off. And it allows the secondary source, that is the PPPS, to run the overall vehicle and uh, the PPPS falls very fast and it falls here and this uh, charge uh, the connection of PPS and connection off of PPS this is done by actually the thermostat so thermostat is a, a resistor kind of a thing or it's a sensor kind of a thing which senses how much is the PPS peak charge how much is the PPS 70 percent charge and depending on that it connects or disconnects the PPS source with the overall drive train so as long as uh, the PPS is charging the engine generator is on whenever the pps goes to the peak engine generator switches it off it allows the pps to drive the vehicle how long as long as the pps is not falling to 70 percent whenever the pps falls to 70 percent again the engine generator set will uh, make itself on so that uh, the pps is again charging to 100 percent and you can see that the charge and discharge path is not same so this charging path, this charging path, this charging path, all are different because vehicle is not running on the same flat road. Vehicle is running sometimes to up, down. Sometimes there is a start stop in the city, uh, on the hill, in the highway. So every time the charging and discharging profile of the vehicle is not same. But these two levels are same. Whenever it is charging, as soon as the PPS reaches to the top line 100%, it is going to be switched off, switched off by the thermostat. Now let us see what are the six lines written on this uh, on-off thermostat control. So this can be a five mark question. This can be a 10 mark question. So as long as the uh, PPS is charging, uh, the engine generator is going to be on. 
whenever the PPS is charged, engine generator is going to switch it off as long as PPS is not falling to 70%. As soon as the PPS falls to 70%, again the thermostat uh, starts the PPS charging. Again, uh, it goes uh, up to 100% top line. So this is actually the strategy B in a cyclic manner. So the maximum SOC of the PPS control strategy emphasizes on keeping the SOC of the PPS at high level constantly. In some driving conditions, such as driving for a long time with a low load on a highway at a constant speed, that means here there's a golden opportunity for charging the PPS. That we are high, we are driving for a, a long time with a low load. That means uh, P com is less than P E G. P com is less than P E G. That means whatever P E G is there, that is quite big. It can do two things. It can supply the command uh, power uh, and as well as it can charge the PPPS. So for a long time uh, driving with a low load on a highway or constant speed, the PPPS can be easily charged to its full level and the engine generator is forced to operate at a power output smaller than its optimum. So whatever power is being asked from the overall system, hybrid system, uh, only the PEG can supply that. So not necessary to bring PPS into action because PPS is already low. Now, uh, whatever PEG power is there, do two things with that. Uh, give the power for traction as well as charge the PPS. Here, the efficiency of the drivetrain is reduced because we are using some power to charge the PPS. So power is generated by EG, but not all power is used for driving the vehicle. Some power is used to charge the PPS as well. That's why efficiency is reduced. But in this case, the engine on-off or thermostat control strategy would be appropriate. So what is that thermostat? When can you apply the thermostat if we are driving for a long time with a low uh, load on a highway at a constant speed? So this is the condition, driving long time with a low load on a highway at a constant speed. This is the condition with which we can apply the thermostat on-off uh, strategy. The operation of the engine generation is completely controlled by the SOC of the PPT. That means if uh, PPS SOC is high at the time engine is switched off. If PPS SOC is at 70%, then engine is uh, again on. So that's why the operation of the engine operator is completely controlled by the SOC of PPS. When SOC of the PPS reaches its preset top line 100%, the engine generator is turned off and the vehicle is propelled by the PPS only. Uh, on the other hand, when the SOC of the PPS reaches its bottom, so this bottom line is not 0%, battery never is taken to 0%, maybe 70%. Okay, then the engine generator is turned on. So very simple to understand kind of a thing. So please prepare this as a five marks question. I'm going for the, uh, the PPS uh, obtain its charging from the engine generator. In this way, the engine can always be operated within its optimal efficiency region. It's okay. Now I'm going for the design part. So in design part, there are actually uh, three designs given in your syllabus, but this is an electrical coupling thing. I guess it is not at all difficult. So we will start with electrical coupling design. And next day, we will see engine design. Next day, we will see PPS design. Next day, we will see the electrical motor design. Okay, so all these three things, which are the main topics asked in the syllabus, we will see in the next day. That is electrical motor design and sizing. Sizing means what should be the size of the motor to uh, drive the drivetrain. Uh, all the other uh, specifications of the motor also come with that. So design of motor, design of engine, design of uh, PPS, all those things we will see in the next day. Uh, today we are going to finish this lecture in another 10 minutes with this uh, engine coupling, uh, electrical coupling of the hybrid drive track. So there are three block diagrams. This also can be a 10 marks question. That is electrical coupling. What are the different methods and which method is the most suited? So there are four slides. Uh, I will like to explain the four slides to you. So it is said that the successful design of the uh, drivetrain system means ensuring that vehicle is capable of achieving desired performance such as acceleration, gradability, high speed, and high operating efficiency. Electrical coupling device, traction motor drive, engine generator, PPS. So these are the four design things in our syllabus. Electrical coupling, which is not mentioned in your syllabus, but we'll do that and questions will be asked on this. Then traction motor drive, engine generator, and PPS. So these are the four things we are going to see. Their design should primarily be considered at a system level with ensuring that uh, compensators work harmonically. So these are the four things. Uh, electrical coupling, we will complete today. There are three small block diagrams. Then power rating design of traction motor. Very important thing that if we want to drive some load, how much should be the uh, traction on the motor? That means how much is the tractive power produced by the motor? Third is the power rating design of engine generator. Fourth one is design of PPS. In PPS designing, there are two. One is 
power capacity of PPS, another is energy capacity of PPS. So energy is given in joule, and joule per second is watts, is nothing but the power capacity of PPS. Now let's see there are three types. So this is the first type, it is called as directly connected power source and sink. So this is a vehicle controller, so this is the ECU. Okay, so engine is here, engine is getting the power from the fuel, uh, the fuel from the fuel tank. Engine is connected to generator with an electrical link. So this vehicle controller is controlling every block. So it is actually getting the driving command, which is nothing but acceleration and speed uh, and uh, brake also. Okay, so driving command here mainly it is acceleration. That is we are pressing the accelerator. So this vehicle controller is controlling the generator, engine and the motor controller. So the electrical coupling device is the sole linkage. So here this is the electrical coupling device rectifier and also we are talking actually about the electrical coupling there is a rectifier and this bus so there is a bus here and here is the pps so this part design rectifier pps bus this part design we are actually seeing here another principle of electrical coupling device it is called directly collected power source and sink so electrical coupling device is the sole linkage uh, for combining the three sources there is a power source together so engine generator rectifier and pps so this engine generator and pps these three are the power source and they are directly connected okay with the so its major function is to regulate the power or electric current flow between these power sources and sink the power current regulation is carried out based on the proper control of terminal voltages so here you can see that this engine generator here also it is electrical link and here actually it is ac rectifier is dc pps is also giving dc and together this power is given to the motor controller and motor his motor is here <clears throat> so this power is being channelized to the motor by using the motor controller and this vehicle controller is actually controlling the motor controller so here is a direct connection that is the engine generator rectifier is directly connected to pps so there is nothing in between okay what can come in between in between there can come a dc to dc converter so that we are going to see in the next slide so what is meant by direct connection so this engine generator rectifier these two lines and pps these two lines Okay, so this plus is connected to this plus, this minus is connected to this minus. So they are connected in kind, uh, some kind of direct connection. Okay, so that's why this is that series generator hybrid. This is the hybrid series and this and this PPS is directly connected in a parallel manner. So why is it called series hybrid? Because engine and generator are in series. That's why it is called series. It is not because of engine generator and PPS. Nothing of PPS here. Why it is called series hybrid? Okay, design of series hybrid. Why are you always calling series hybrid? Because engine and generator, that electrical and mechanical, both things are in connected in series. That's why it is called as a series hybrid. But in this case, the special thing is they are connected together, direct connection. So the simple structure is to connect the three terminals together directly as shown in uh, the figure right above. This is the second type and this is the most widely used type why this is given in the last slide i will not explain you have to understand so in this case this configuration is the simplest and has the lowest cost its major feature is that the bus voltage so there's the bus voltage so there's the engine generator rectifier in the previous case it was engine generator rectifier three blocks in the next block they have actually mixed it engine generator and rectifier they have mixed it and this is the bus and between pps and dc bus there is coming a dc to dc converter That's why this is done on PPS side. So configuration with DC to DC converter on the PPS side like this. So DC to DC converter is connected with the PPS. That's why it is called as a most widely used and uh, most uh, simple and most effective. So why is it most effective? It is given in the fourth uh, last slide today. So its major feature is that the bus voltage is equal to the rectified voltage. So this bus voltage is equal to the rectified voltage of the generator and that of the PPS. So whatever PPS and engine generator rectifier together their voltage is added and that is the DC bus voltage and that is given to the traction motor through the motor drive and this engine generator this motor drive this PPS all are being controlled by the vehicle controller you can show it here also so on vehicle controller you can draw here that is connected to engine generator that is connected to traction motor that is connected to the PPS that is connected to the motor drive and all bus voltage is determined by the minimum voltage of the two voltages so if this voltage is 10 volt and if this pps voltage is 3 volt the bus voltage will be 3 volt okay so whenever uh, these two things are connected like this for the safety of the traction motor whichever voltage is the lowest so the bus voltage is determined by the minimum of the two voltages that is v generator and the vpps the power flow is solely controlled by the voltage of the generator the power flow is solely controlled by the voltage of the generator so this is mainly controlling what is going to be the 
uh, overall uh, voltage given to the motor. The delivery is power to the traction motor and PPS. The open circuit voltage, zero current of the generator rectified must be higher than the PPS voltage. This can be done by controlling the engine throttle and the magnetic field of the generator. So these are the some intricate details. But main thing you have to understand is in this configuration, DC to DC converter is placed in between PPS and engine generator. So whatever is the output power from PPS that is actually converted judiciously for proper addition with engine generator and then added and to the DC bus. So in regenerative braking, so how regenerative braking occurs? This traction motor is giving power back through this motor drive through DC to DC converter to the PPS. So in regenerative braking, the generated bus voltage by the traction motor must be higher than the PPS voltage. So if PPS is 10 volt and traction motor is generating 2 volt, this 2 volt cannot charge this 10 volt. On the other hand, if PPS is 2 volt and traction motor is 10 volt, then only this traction motor can charge the PPS. So in regenerative braking, the generated bus voltage by the traction motor must be higher. That means whatever voltage is produced coming from outside to the DC bus, that should be higher than the PPS voltage. Then only this PPS can be charged by regenerative braking. This engine generator can also charge the PPS and this traction motor can also charge the PPS. However, the voltage generated by the traction motor is usually proportional to the rotational speed of the motor. So this is the second case. That is engine generator is here, then PPS is connected to the bus with DC to DC converter. This is the second case. Third case, we are finding the DC to DC converter is connected after the engine generator and PPS is connected directly to the bus. So adding a DC to DC converter and thus releasing the voltage constants may specifically improve the performance of the drivetrain. Two alternative configurations are shown in two and three. Two already we have seen. In configuration two, the DC to DC converter is placed between PP, PPS and the DC bus. We have seen it in the previous slide. So DC to DC converter is between PPS and the DC bus. But and the engine generator rectifier is connected directly to the DC bus. So in configuration three, that is this configuration, the DC to DC converter is placed between the engine generator rectifier and the DC bus. The PPS here is directly connected to the DC bus. In this figure three, the PPS voltage can be different from the DC bus voltage. Okay, so DC bus voltage and PPS voltage is not necessarily to be alone, not necessarily to be same. So PPS voltage can be different from DC bus voltage, where the rectifier voltage of the engine generator is always equal to the DC bus voltage. Contrary to the configuration in point two, the DC to DC voltage here conditions the rectifier voltage and voltage PPS is always equal to the DC bus voltage. So in this case, actually engine generator will be the main contributor of the voltage given to the traction drive train and PPS is the supporting. So two cases, one is DC to DC converter is connected after PPS and engine generator voltage is connected directly. Third case, PPS is connected directly, engine generator voltage is connected to DC bus by DC to DC converter. And we will find that this case, that is the second case, where DC to DC converter is connected after the PPS, this is the best case out of three. So you have to explain uh, this thing if this question is asked, that is, what is the designing principle of electrical coupling? First, you have to talk about this case, direct connection. There is no DC to DC converter here. Second case, there is a DC to DC converter, which is kind of an impedance matching as well, plus it is giving some buffer. So in this case, engine generator is not having DC to DC bus, PPS is having a DC to DC bus. And this is the most widely used configuration. Third case, uh, the DC to DC converter is connected after the engine generator rectifier and PPS is connected directly. But what we will find is the second conversion is the best. And why is it so? It is given here. So this is the second conversion and this is the third conversion. So the configuration 2, that is the top one, seems to be more appropriate for series hybrid application when compared with com configuration 3, which is given below. So the advantage of configuration 2 is change in the voltage of PPS do not affect the DC bus voltage. So in this case, between PPS and DC bus, there is a DC to DC converter. So any abrupt changes in PPS will not directly affect the DC bus voltage. Very big point. So in case of this two, change in uh, voltage of PPS do not affect the DC bus voltage directly. That is the first case. The energy in the PPS can be fully used. OK, so PPS energy can be fully used in the second case. Uh, the voltage of the DC bus can be maintained by controlling the engine throttle and or the magnetic field of the generator. So main DC bus voltage, which is mainly driving the traction motor. PPS is not mainly driving the traction motor. PPS is just a bumper kind of a source. Okay, So that should not uh, do too much for the traction motor. But PEG should be doing too much for the traction motor. And that happens here because uh, the DC bus voltage is actually directly equal to the 
engine generator voltage. So third case, the voltage of the DC bus can be maintained by controlling the engine throttle and or the magnetic field of the generator. That means this is actually controlling the DC bus. Fourth case, a low PPS voltage can be used, which may lead to small and light PPS peak uh, pack and less cost. Fourth case, and the charging current of PPS can be regulated during the regenerative braking and charging from the engine generator. So this regenerative braking also, the DC to DC converter can be uh, designed in such a way that it can accommodate uh, the traction motor and regenerative braking to charge the PPS. So these are the five uh, cases, which is actually telling why is the second coupling that is a DC to DC converter uh, after the PPS and then output of DC to DC converter is connected to DC bus. Why is this best uh, coupling? That is actually explained in this. So last four slides, direct connection, DC to DC converter after PPS, DC to DC converter after rectifier, all these three are explained. Uh, you have to explain it in short. And why this DC to DC converter after the PPS is the best configuration? That is explained here. So this actually uh, finishes the second part of the module A of uh, module, uh, second part of uh, the first module of uh, module five. Uh, next day, we will see three designing or size, sizing uh, considerations. That is designing or sizing of motor, that is this motor drive. Second thing is designing and sizing of this engine generator. And third thing is designing and sizing of this PPS. So motor, engine generator and PPS. These three are the main components and how to design that. All those three things we'll be seeing next day. That's all from me today.